Ferguson with a short ball, was a brilliant one, and he's got in. It's a second for Rangers. Yes. Smith going on the outside, but running into trouble. Turns it out in front. Cooper scores for Rangers. Danny Johnson out in front. For more than a century, one match on the fixture list has stirred the greatest of passions. While defeat to Rangers fans is distasteful, defeat at the hands of their greatest rivals is unthinkable. And so victory against Celtic is a moment of celebration, which can only be understood by those who've witnessed what's often been called the greatest club game in the world. This record of achievement begins in April 1966, with Rangers under the captaincy of John Gregg. I remember 66 was a really important game for us because uh, it really was the start of, which we didn't know at the time, the great run with Celtic in the League Championship. But we played the final that year and we had to win the game to stop Celtic winning the treble. They beat us 5-1 in the previous league match so they were way out favourites to win the game. Uh, we drew nothing each in the Saturday, a tight match, a scrappy game. But on the Wednesday night we managed to beat them 1-0. And it will always be remembered for Kai Johansson, the only Danish player to score a goal in the Scottish Cup final. Inside forward Johnston. Well, I don't know how McLean missed that one. And somebody's foot stopped that one. And it's a goal by Johansson. Well, there it is. Johansson. I remember that because uh, I was just I had just joined the club then, and uh, the ground staff didn't get any st uh, stand tickets, but they did give us a, a ground ticket. So I was standing in the back of the, the ground there, and I seen right behind Kai Johansson's shot. It was a great goal. The 1970 League, League Cup final was uh, quite a, an experience. I remember at the beginning of the week, I woke up uh, with this problem, my shin bone. And uh, I was amazed that the club doctor told me I couldn't play. Uh, it was the first final we'd, that uh, I'd ever missed since I came to the club. But uh, it, with me missing the game, it allowed uh, a young, slim Derek Johnson to make his debut. And uh, I think that was a great day for you, wasn't it? Well, that was about five stone ago. <laughs> <laughs> the good thing about that was I was fortunate because <coughs> we'd had a bad start to the season and uh, I'd been scoring a lot of goals for the reserves and it was a chance that Willie Waddle took by playing me. Never forget the Friday uh, he called me into the boot room, him and Jock, he said, look son don't be nervous, there's half a dozen tickets, bring your family to the game you're playing, have a good night's sleep. And the good thing about it was I did have a good night's sleep because I was, n I was never nervous, I was never the nervous type. You sold the tickets? I sold the tickets, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no nerves at all, I mean the game, I remember very little about the game, obviously the goal was great, it was a tremendous move and uh, one of these headers, I get in between McNeil and Jim Craig, just timed it well, I went into the corner, but uh, it's one of these games that I'll never forget because it was the making of me, because the fans then took to me right away. Henderson to McDonald, Johnston, Steen and Derry Johnston out in front. Talk about that game, that was the first first time I, well, I was going to win a trophy and I always remember that for the last five, ten minutes being really nervous, wanting the final whistle to be blown and get it over with, get up there and get the cup. I think there's no doubt the best Scottish Cup final, certainly I've ever played in, I don't know about uh, you pair, I remember the Centenary Cup final in 72-73, we beat Celtic 3-2 and uh, a magnificent game for it. I mean, the games before that uh, were all towsy games, but this one was a magnificent game. Remember, lots of good football played, you know, an early goal settled everyone down, and who will ever forget Big Tams tapping with his, his, uh, his studs for the winner. Nobody behind. Johnston. The beautiful ball to the crease. It's a goal. Here's Matheson. And a McDonald's 11 minutes to have time. It's a good ball, it's a goal! Tyler the scorer. Here's Quinton Young for Rangers. As towards Khan. Khan going through. And it's there. 
The goal for Rangers. Rangers 2, Celtic 1. Within about 30 seconds of the second half kickoff. And that long through ball coming to Con. Con looking as if he might have pushed it too far. But getting the final touch and putting Rangers one up at this vital stage. Has a good ball to Johnston. And here's Deans with a chance. No, what's been given? It's a penalty. Penalty to Celtic. George Connolly to take it. This is a vital one for Celtic. And he's done it. And it's... Getting the final touch. I think Celtic were dominating the football at that time, John. Everything was going their way. And yeah. Really, everything was against us winning that. But uh, once again, when, it, when we had to do something, we'd done it. That's right. Uh, it was a game, another game against Celtic that you had to win. And in my opinion, looking back over all, all the finals I played, it was to me it was one of the best finals since I'd played in 1964 against Dundee. I well, always remembered as the Bert Slater Cup final. But the two things I remember about the game was he looking big time for size face when he scored that goal because we knew at training and everything he hardly scored a goal at training, never made in the game. He's trying to catch him after he did yeah, score. Yeah, the, the look in his face and his eyes popping out his head there, and it was great that like, somebody like big time could score. And the other thing was Princess Alexandria was at the game, I think it was about the first time for a long, long time when any royalty was there. And I can remember it as if it was yesterday, going up the stairs at Hamden to get the cup. And I thought, well, I'm going to get this cup for somebody important. I looked at my hands, they were filthy, so I spat in my hands, wiped them with my jersey <laughs> and uh, went up there and, uh, and collected the cup. But maybe we should have had royalty every year, we could have won it every year. By the middle of the 70s, I'd been with the club for about 10 years and never really had a, a league medal and never really done well. And I always remember the game at New Year where I think we won 3 nothing that day and it was the first time really where they really gave Celtic a, a going over. Uh, it was the easiest game I can remember playing against Celtic. We always got tight games, but this one, we, we, we could have won about four or five. And uh, after we won that game, we went for strength to strength. And I think we went the whole way into the season undefeated and eventually won the championship. Stanley gets it back. Out to McLean, still dangerous. McDonald, Johnston, Scott, all in the middle. McLean, right foot to the left foot. There's the chip cross. Johnston going in. That's there. Beautiful goal. Derek Johnston has scored in the fifth minute for Rangers. Rangers lead 1-0, a beautiful build-up and a beautiful climax. McDonald's superb pass out to McLean. McLean making tracks infield. Farlane looked as if he had lost it, got it through again to McLean. McLean right foot to his left foot, out in front. Derek Johnson at the far post, a fine header. Just coming up to the sixth minute. Was that not about the time that the late Jock Steen had his car smash and uh, Sean Farlane was in charge of the team? Because I think at that time we played Celtic quite a number of times and we felt we were really doing well against them. And all of a sudden at half time, Jock Steen would change the team, change his tactics, and we would end up losing the match. But uh, like you, Sandy, I thought it was at the end of that day it was an easy match. With the greatest respect to Sean Fallon, by the way. It was, yes. And I'll remember, obviously, for wee Tommy McLean, the, the impact he had on the game that day. I mean, I relied on crosses from wingers, and wee Tom was so accurate. The first goal was pinpointed right to the old napper and it was 1-0. Wee Tam scored later on himself. What a game he had that day. McDonald, McLean, great chance for number two. It's there, it's number two. Rangers go two up. Good goal coming away for Rangers. Good running here by McDougall. Nice ball out to McLean. There's the cross. Parlane. It's a goal. 3 nothing. Parlane has made it 3 nothing. 28 minutes gone in the second half. And that's the close-up that gives you the news. We never win anything. We just the one player on the team scoring goals. Which proved even then. It's the same nowadays. A good example of the point you just made there was in the 1975-76 League Cup final when Alec McDonald scored the, the only goal of the game. 
uh, that showed you the, the potential that we had in the team then that they could score from various positions. I thought Alec McDonald and Tom McLean had an un uncanny understanding. The amount of goals that Doddy scored coming in the blindsided players from wee chips for Tom McLean, I thought it was, he, he got in, and you made the point earlier when we were talking that in many ways he was like a Brian Robson getting into the box yeah. as a, from a midfield position. Me and McBorsey, he was a great talker, especially to me. I mean, at free kicks and corner kicks, he used to tell me to take the big fellas away and he would just sneak in with these little well, glances. Well, he'd feed off you, you'd take them great. to the back and he'd yeah. time his run really well and get in front of people. He was a player's player, we yeah. died. Jackson. Quentin Young. McClay. To Young, that's a good ball. On to Derek Farlane. Farlane with it. Oh, Ed Wilson's there. He has McDonald with it. It's there. Alec McDonald has opened the scoring. And no doubt the Rangers end will erupt when this goes out. There it is. We won that League Cup and it's, it, we thought it was going to set us up for another good season and maybe retain our championship which we won the year before but we stumbled a little bit and uh, by the time we came to play Celtic in January out here at Ibrox, it was a game we always had to beat Celtic, we all knew that, but it was a game that we really had to win that day because we were three points behind and if they had beaten us they obviously had gone a bit out of reach with half the season gone. But uh, it was a game we won. In our game we won when, won when we had to win, and you, you scored that day again. Well, that's, it's always important to win these, especially in New Year's Day. That's when the fans of both sides want to win it. And uh, yeah, I was fortunate enough to get the goal that day, and it landed it down to the one point. McLean taking this. There's Derek Johnson, is there? Right on the half hour. Rangers won, Celtic nothing. The score of Derek Johnson. It came from the set position. And McLean, who is an artist at this, look for Johnson, watch it, and finds him. It was only two years later that we were chasing the treble again. We had a really good start to the season. And uh, we're coming up to the Celtic game at New Year. And uh, if we managed to beat Celtic there, we more or less put them out of the league. Because the only challengers we had that year were Aberdeen. And now, of course, the clearance by Peter Latchford. There's Russell again. Gordon Smith. Gordon Smith scores his 20th goal for Rangers. Bobby Russell. If you remember, John, it was quite a controversial uh, moment in that game. Controversial, I'll say it was. There was a, something happened in our box. Some Penalty incident for Celtic or something, wasn't it? Joe Clay, but him and Colin Jackson went for a ball and I think Joe Clay ended up by Colin pushing, which he's never done anything like that in his life. The referee waving play on for a moment. He gave the Celtic fans some hope there. He appeared to run to the spot, but waved play on. McDonald. McLean. Russell must score. Dragon Fuck finishes it off. Something you dream of all your life, uh, New Year's Day game against Celtic, and the boys stuck about yard for the line. And I ran and then blootered it, kept my head down, hit the underside of the bar with it, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> managed to score a goal. But what a feeling at the Celtic end. First, that was uh, showed you a great turn of pace there to get up that park. You'll notice, son, I was a, you were another full back that day, yeah. but I was the full back that got up the park. I was, you were still I was back, covering for you. Yeah, you were still back there posing for the cameras, as you're doing now. <laughs> 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 Lavin taking it. Craig with his chest and driven in by Edvalson. Jardin. That's touched in by Parlin. The League Cup final in March 1978 was quite interesting when you look back on it, Derek, because uh, it was the last team. I think the three of us played against Celtic in a cup final because we all went different ways then. That's right, and the game was actually played in March. We were playing well up until then in the league and it really set us up that season for another treble. Now Smith quickly to the other end. Cooper and Mark. Back to Smith. Smith going on the outside, but running into trouble, turns it out in front, 
Cooper scores. Cooper scores for Rangers. Six minutes from half time. Dave Cooper's seventh goal of the season. Sneddon is onside, it's a good move. Edvaldson, goal! Out of nothing, Celtic score! Three minutes remaining. Smith to Johnston. Miller coming up as the extra man. There's his cross, there's Latchford, the ball spinning loose, headed in by Smith, and the referee's giving a goal. Gordon Smith scores, three minutes from the end of extra time. His 23rd goal of the season, and for the second time of the match, Rangers go into the lead. Although it wasn't a, a great game that day, that victory there set us up to go on and win another treble. And uh, after that, basically the team really started to break up. You know, it was an end of an era for us. Yeah, it was a good side that, because uh, apart from being a good football team, successful team, I thought we all got in great with each other. I thought we got in great as guys. We, we didn't, there was no cliques in the team. We played for each other. We helped each other out and uh, we got a just reward for it in the pitch. But uh, it turned out to be my last season. You guys played a few seasons more, but uh, I was basically the first one to leave and uh, it broke up a, what had been a very successful team in a successful era. Surely one of the greatest memories of playing against Celtic must have been that League Cup final when you scored all the goals. Yeah, I think it was, but to be fair, I think it's um, possibly one of my greatest, if not my greatest moment at Rangers. And uh, to score a hat-trick in any Cup final, but especially against Celtic, was, was a, real, a real dream for me. What do you remember of the game? I remember a lot. I remember everything, actually. I remember the, the, the first goal was a penalty. Bobby Russell got brought down right on, right on half-time. Might be some stoppage time, some injuries. Holding play up a couple of times. Here's David Cooper. Russell has taken up good position. Stepping inside, Mother McLeod, and a penalty kick has been given. A penalty kick to Rangers. A hoist against Bonner. Perfectly stopped away by Ali McCoist. And Rangers take the lead. Fifty minutes of the second half gone, is this the second for Rangers? Yes, Sally McCoist has done it. Good pass from Proven, just Tommy Burns, McClare and McGarvey making runs up front. McClare has gone to the left, Burns committing the Rangers defence. Still Burns going all the way and that'll be a free kick. So Burns over the ball, McLeod is waiting. Brian McClare, the set piece brings Celtic back into the game. They finished the first half in the same fashion as Rangers finished. They finished the second half rather the same way, and the challenge coming into the back. The penalty kick has been given, and yes, drama again at the end of the second half. McCoist has been penalised. I gave away the penalty. So you admitted? No. <laughs> when Murder McLeod took a dive in the box, I still claim to this day it wasn't a penalty. But anyway, the with hindsight, it probably worked out better for me when they equalised and then takes a time, and uh, we got another penalty when Big Roy. And tackled me from behind, which he claims is never a penalty. By this, but it was a stone wall penalty, and uh, I got up and Bonner got down and, and Pat did well to stop it. But I just followed up and knocked the rebound in. That'll be a penalty. Yes, Aiken penalised for that rash challenge on Ali McCoist. McCoist facing Pat Bonner with a kick which could win the League Cup for Rangers. He made it in the second attempt, 
But it must be every boy's dream to score a hat trick in a final against Celtic. That's Roy Verover stuff. That's right. Well, I couldn't believe it because it, the crazy thing was I actually started off in the middle of the park that day, and uh, I, th I think I can't remember who got taken off when I got moved back up front and. Uh, I scored the first penalty in the middle of the part and uh, went back up front. But it was incredible to score a hat trick in a 3 2 victory over Celtic. It was, was a dream, really. And um, I've been very, very fortunate because I, I actually managed it again in a Glasgow Cup tie where we beat them 3 2 after extra time. So I've been very, very fortunate. What about that amazing 4 4 tie? Because anybody who ever saw that match reckons it was the most incredible game they ever saw. It really was, without a doubt. I think it's the most incredible game I've ever played in. Because uh, some of the, the antics on the park and, uh, was, was incredible. What, what I think made it was, a, it was torrential rain, I remember, that day. and it, The park was soaking wet and the ball was skidding about. If the weather remains the same, there may be problems later on. Here's McLeod. Now Paul McStay. Paul McStay. Excellent play from the Scotland midfield player. A chance for Johnston and Celtic on ahead. Arts Deacon. Chance again for Celtic. Ryan McLear. 2 0. Well, it's a very quick change with Mother McLeod at right back. Owen Arts Deacon on the left side of midfield and leaving only two men up front. Here's Durant, now McCoist. The out swinging cross, Cammy Fraser. Brilliant goal from Rangers. Johnston for Celtic. That's a fine pass to Burns, a great chance for Celtic for the third. Brilliantly finished. Bounce the ball beating Grant. Here's McCoist. Magnificent goal, Ali McCoist. Russell hugging the right touch line. There's Burns in his new role in midfield. Fine pass to McPherson. Mother McLeod back with him. Lower click. That's the third. Well taken by Bonner. Played back in and under the crossbar. Touched in by Tammy Fraser. The most end to end game I've ever played in. One minute we were 3 1 down, the next minute we were 4 3 up, and then it ended up 4 each. You couldn't have, I don't think the fans could have asked for a better game. And all of a sudden we've, we've come back and we've scored three goals in the trot, and it was 4 3 in front. And we think we're home and dry. And uh, Murder McLeod again, funnily enough, he hit a, a shot, a screamer from the edge of the box, right in the top corner. Oh, Johnston taking on McPherson. I think I can safely say it's the only old firm game where two sets of fans have went home happy. You said when you came here that it's more important to win the championship even if you lose four times to Celtic. Four years down the road, do you still stand by that? Do I see that on film? <laughs> I, um, I think winning the championship is what it's all about. Um, it'd be very, in retrospect, maybe that was the wrong thing to say. It'd be very hard for our supporters to accept that if that was the case. But at the end of the day, if the silverware ends up on the, on the sideboard, um, and we've won four times, we've only lost four times. If we won for that, would, that, that, that would put the icing on the cake if we could, if we could do that in a season. But um, at the end of the day, Bill, it's about winning a trophy. And um, if we have to take a few knocks on the way, um, I wouldn't complain as long as we ended up the silverware. When I came here at first, I had been a Rangers supporter as a boy. And I would have said, after being 15 odd years at Dundee United, I would have said, yeah, well, we would rather win the championship than, than beat Celtic four times. But it actually runs quite close. <laughs> Cooper. Will Durant with a chance, and he's done it! A brilliant goal by Durant. Only for a short period of Celtic got into the game. Look at that beautifully led off ball, Durant. And uh, I seen him making a run over to the right hand side, but he was always on his left peg. And I thought if he made a run inside, he might slip it. And uh, I couldn't ask for a more glorious pass. Your first chance of managerial success here, of course, was that old firm cup final of October 1986. And you had to watch from the stand. How tense was it for you? 
It was tense. I can remember actually going up the stairs and I got to the swing doors at the top of the stairs at Hamden. I can remember actually stopping as the whistle blew for the start of the game and I had to push myself to go through those doors. I'd have much rather been playing in that game. And Cammy Fraser is there, Butcher's there, Durant is there and scores! Durant has caught for Rangers! 1-0 with exactly 17 minutes gone and now Aiken Edison, a brilliant equaliser McClare Goes for a penalty kick there it's a given it's a penalty to Rangers Butcher was fouled according to the referee and I make it about seven minutes remaining as that was hoisted up and Butcher went down and the referee pointed to the spot I make it five and a half minutes remaining of the Skull Cup final penalty to Rangers 2-1 Done with the greatest simplicity by a man hoisted up by McCoy's Davy Cooper. To win any trophy is a special feeling. I think to win it against our old firm rivals was. Um, it's a difficult thing to put into words, but it's, it's even more special. Um, I don't think anybody could actually put it into words what, actually, what, what winning a cup final against all, your, your oldest enemy actually means. And there is Terry Butcher, the first Englishman to hold that League Cup trophy aloft. And you do it right now. Well, that was a great day out. Um, I had my family up for the first time to watch me in a uh, domestic final. Uh, they'd see me play against Dagmar in the uh, UEFA Cup in 81, and having won that, that was a, a great honour. But um, to play against Celtic, in the final at Hamden, you know, everybody talked about that and, you know, all the greats, you saw all the clips before, of the, you know, John Gregg leading the team to triumph and everything else and, you know, you sort of felt that tradition and, you know, felt as you, you felt as though you had to do well for those. Um, it was quite unique, really, with the Englishman being there, everybody was saying about, and then we, if it was one of the first times an Englishman would have held the, the trophy up and all this and that's all going through your mind when you, when you line up, but uh, to actually uh, win the game uh, so close to the end as well, and against Celtic, and from our fans, all the frustrations of the of the previous years, it was uh, so noisy and it was overwhelming. You know that that game to me stands out. It's probably one of the uh, happiest moments of uh, of my career here. In my opinion, one of the best matches I saw you play for Rangers was against Celtic here in the New Year game, two 0 mm -hmm. Now you seem to really relish the atmosphere of the big match occasion there. Yeah, I, I as I said. I think if you're if you're any player at all, you want to be involved at a big club, and being at a big club means you're involved in big games, and they don't come much bigger than that. And that's that day. I think it was torrential rain. Um, New Year's Day was it New Year's Day or the second of January, and it was special. Full house, atmosphere second to none. We played well on the day. I, I remember it vividly. It was a good game to play football. On. That's it. In. It's there. The scored for Rangers, a little striker who played remarkably well for Rangers on Saturday. Hits it off again. Well, you know, the man I think Rangers should give credit to for that, of course, is the captain, Terry Butcher, with that near post back header. It always looked as if it might be put in, and Fleck made absolutely sure. Out to Durant, to Sinus. Beautifully touched round, beautiful move by Rangers again. Really are playing some superb football. Engineered mainly by the man spraying out that pass at the moment. Soon as now Cooper. Ooh, the, it's there. Number two, Ali McCoy's. And McCoy's with a broad smile on his face. Now, you would not have expected Bonner to have made a mistake with this. 
difficult enough on a day like today, but he should have got it, and there was McCoy to make it number two. Graham, could you ever have imagined the atmosphere of actually taking part in an old firm game? No, I don't think so. I, I played in, in Merseyside derbies and everyone had said that they were a wee bit special. But I certainly feel um, there's far more passion involved in the Rangers Celtic game than anything I've ever played in. But does it actually intimidate you? No, I think if um, you enjoy playing at a big club, um, and I think most players would like to be a club like this, if, you, if you're at a big club you've got to enjoy the big games and they don't come any bigger than that. You try and play the game down a little bit. Uh, everybody tells the players the importance of the match. Uh, everywhere they go, supporters are always saying, oh, big game Saturday, uh, we'll have to win this one. Uh, it's one that the management don't have to work particularly hard in, in lifting players and making sure that their approach is correct. And uh, I think it's uh, on the day. We always just try and play it down a little bit and try and keep the, the nerves at as low a level as possible. You have a very much uh, a tactical role at Ibrox, but in some ways tactics go out the window in these games because of the passion. I think that happens. I th it was the first thing that, that became apparent in, in my very first game back. We played in a um, Glasgow Cup final here, and uh, it was a terrific match, which we were fortunate enough to win 3-2. And I thought then, I, I see players doing things that you know I wouldn't normally associate with them. And uh, it's, it's a strange environment, and it's one that I think you have to experience before you can fully appreciate it. It's far easier playing in them than having to manage in them. Um, you're, you know, you're out there and you're, you're enjoying actually the game of football. There's so much tension, there's so much involved. Um, the result means so much to, to everybody involved, the supporters, the players, people who live in Australia, people who live in Canada. Um, it means so much to every Rangers supporter in that game. How would you put the, the old from contest into context though? Is it a good game or is it just a, one that's full of passion? It's a great game if you win it. Well, it's a terrible game if you lose it. Uh, there's been good matches, like every other game. I mean, you, you know, you go out and you hope it is a good game, and you hope it, uh, the spectators enjoy it. There's a lot of tension in games. I think if someone scores early in the game, it helps to take away a bit of the tension because then they concentrate more on the match, and uh, you know, if you're a goal down, you have to come back. And I think where the teams have scored early, the games have been better. But where we've been playing on a wee bit, the, the tension increases as the game goes on. Tension was never greater than at Ibrox one Saturday in October 1987 when Terry Butcher and Chris Woods and Celtic's Frank McAvenny were all red carded. But the footballing story was one of an astonishing Rangers fight back. The game itself, um, I think it was, it started off quite poorly really. The game itself wasn't much of a spectacle apart from the goals. And I was unfortunate enough to score, to score a goal, um, an own goal past Graham Roberts after Chris Woods and Frank McAvenny had been sent off. Tangle of legs, it's sorted out by McCarthy, hit a chance now for Walker. It's Andy Walker going through and Roberts. No mistake this time. Celtic are in front. Stark now to get sideways. Next day helps it on to Grant. Oh, that's a good ball from Stark. Here's Walker. That's for Peter Grant. That's the second. Good play again from Ferguson. Here's Goff. Still Richard Goff. Now McCoy's the great chance for Rangers. He's made it! Rangers are right back in the match. And this goal, a tribute initially to Ferguson and then to Richard Goff. Now just look at the quality of this pass from Goff. Opening up the Celtic defence. And McCoy so deadly coming in from the flank. Inside of the post, into the net. And Rangers are right back in contention. Um, I heard that we scored to make it 2-1. Um, and then of course the minutes tick by and he's sitting there and uh, don't know what to do. You know, well, fully what, like 25 minutes or something before the end of the game you're sent off. You don't know what to do with those 25 minutes. It's like you know, haven't got a clue what to do. So he's just sitting there and then all of a sudden this noise like an aircraft taking off. Um, you know, I wonder what that, the on earth was going on. I thought the, the standard collapsed or something. And you know, the, um, Richard Goff had poked in the equaliser to make it 2-2. Ferguson playing it wide for Durant. Rogan comes to meet him. Oh, that's good running by Durant. He's away from Rogan. The early ball inside. McCarthy did well with the header, but it's Durant again. The last chance perhaps for Rangers. The chance is on for Goff. Richard Goff makes it two apiece. And the final minute of the match. What an incredible drama here at Ibrox. Richard Goff celebrates. McCarthy did well initially. Durant fastened onto the rebound. 
lofted this across. McKnight was lost in the middle of his goal. Goff stretched out and turned the ball into the corner. And Rangers have snatched the draw. I remember just the noise. Because, I mean, it was... Although we got a draw, I mean, we should have really been... Celtic had about four or five chances to go to win the game, maybe three or four nil on that, that occasion. And I hit the... I can remember Billy Stark hitting the bar and twice, I think. And um, we got a draw out of a game we should have maybe been beaten three or four nil in. So uh, it was... I always uh, have very happy memories of that day. It was a very different occasion, of course, when Celtic came here the following season. And from losing a goal very early on in the match, Rangers then hit five. It was the biggest victory against Celtic in 29 years in any tournament at all. How did, how did you feel during that game? Well, our, our games never, never seem to be short of incident anyway, no matter where, where we're playing. But uh, um, that game itself, we'd, we'd um, uh, start off the season really well, contrary to the... Um, previous two seasons, and Celtic were the champions this time, so the bit was, was uh, between our teeth. Uh, we knew what we had to do in the game and um, set out with a very positive attitude. Um, unfortunately, went a goal down after only a few minutes to Frank McAvenny. The dangerous moment though, the ball came across goal for Butcher's header. That's off the post, there's McAvenny! Ray Wilkins will take the free kick. Goff is in the box once again. So is Butcher. Back to Brown. Blocked by McCarthy, there's McCoist! <laughs> Goff and Butcher have gone up. It's launched in field by Stevens, there's Butcher. Back with Wilkins! Absolutely magnificent from Ray Wilkins! Well, a goal made in England, the throw from Gary Stevens. Terry Butcher, the stunning volley from Wilkins, and Andrews scarcely moved. Here's Durant retrieving it for Rangers. McCoy nods it on an awkward one for Andrews. And the ball is in the net. It's a goal for Rangers. McCoy to Walters. Facing McCarthy, getting in a fine cross. Kevin Finkel! Walters to Finkel! It's 4 1 to Rangers! It was great play from Walters, finding room for the cross. There was Finkel powering the header against the balance of Andrews into the top corner. Judging the fight well, Earl Brown. Making it trouble as Ali McCoist. There he goes this time at Walters. This one was uh, a feeling of, well, we won this game 5-1, but there's still three more games to go at least. So, you know, it's just a case, I think it was a more professional attitude in, uh, after that game, which obviously helped during the rest of that season. Now, having said that, when Celtic returned here at the turn of the year, it was another amazing game. Again, Celtic took the lead, and this time you equalised. Yes, uh, Nicky Walk was playing goal this time in place of Chris Woods. Um, unfortunately, the first thing he had to do was to put the ball out the back of the net. Chris Morris had a great free kick. There's only a minute gone. Celtic to take this. It's just there, yes. Morris, one nothing. Here's Ferguson. And from just gets rid of Now Walters. Now oh, that is a free kick. Free kick to Rangers. Wilkins will take this. Is Butcher with it? It's in. Butcher, the equaliser. Butcher, rising above the ball, all he needed was the slightest glance, and it soared away from Warner. Butcher, superb in the air. Here's Walters, and Rangers get the free kick. Brown on towards Ferguson. Here's Drinkle. Feels for a penalty, it's given. puts him there and he did that 
with the greatest of ease. Very near the goalkeeper, but it went in. Ferguson with the shot, is there. And I think in came Ferguson and that shot whistled in and I think there was a deflection but Rangers are now 3-1 in the lead straight to McCall Drinko that's a beautiful ball here's Walters through Walters with a great chance and he done it Ball for Rangers in a breakaway. Beautifully taken goal. The classic sucker punch. Rangers have been in the ropes for the last 10 minutes and Walters gets them away from it. 5 1 and 4 1. You know, the, the two home games here it was a great boost for us and set us up well for the remainder of the, of the uh, season. I think it was only um, virtually half the season to go after that one. And we've had, uh, in, as in 86 and 87, 88, 89, we had two good wins around about the new year time to really um, prepare us for, the, for that uh, end of season climax. And if ever a match really sealed the season, it was on April 1st when you travelled to Parkhead and for the first time in nine years recorded a victory there. Yes, we seem to break all the records when we come to old firm matches, um, different records and not records that we like to be repeated sometimes. But uh, we went there as a match that Celtic had to win. Uh, we knew that we had to, to get a result and not lose. Bit of jockeying for position in there. And that's in! Drinko! Left an open chance and he sunk it! Look at that delirious range of support! Now just watch this covering, really, from a Celtic point of view, quite lamentable. He looked up, nobody challenged and there was a slight deflection. Might have been off the Cahill. But it was heading for the net. Rangers, one up in five minutes. It's not a bad ball to Drinkle. It drags a Celtic defender out wide. That's not a bad ball into Walters. Oh, he overdid it. It's a perfectly good tackle. That much depth to that. Ali McCoy, Tiers Brown, Ferguson, and I think high with a foot. Anyway, Rangers get the free kick out of that. There's Ferguson with a short oh, was a brilliant one, and he's gone in. It's a second for Rangers. The goalkeeper couldn't stop it, and I think Ali got the final touch, Ali McCoy. A superbly struck free kick there. It whistled and brilliantly saved or stopped, and Ali McCoy just getting in the head end. Rangers are two up with about oh, 13 minutes of this have to go, and look at it. Goalkeeper did reach out and flick it back. Boys couldn't quite bring it down. Here's Drinko. To Ferguson. Stevens gives support. A beautiful turn, and it's almost in. He tries to chip it, and Brown just goes over. Brilliant piece of participation there by Walters. Here's McGee. John Brown to Walters. Still Walters trying to get the shot in. There's Brown. Yeah, too many Celtic players going at him. Uh, Joe Miller. Brilliant play by Miller. Now this looks better for Celtic. 
Morris. With a great chance, he scored. Walker. Two up. Celtic fighting back. Stevens, a little bit of support there. There's Brown. Oh, it's just passed. Great ball again by Walters. I don't think that's pain, I think it's frustration. Rifled that in, and there was Brown. Very good position there. Goalkeeper beaten and just passed. Nice touch there. Joe Miller. Richard Gore. That's a field for a penalty. The penalty's been given. It's been given for handling by Richard Gore. Given for handling by Gore. Here it is. Stretching out awkwardly for that after having such an excellent game. Penalty to Celtic. So, Joe Miller against Chris Woods. When he saved it, and it's passed. What a remarkable penalty kick. That was a very good save, but nevertheless, a really awful penalty. Lack conviction, and he couldn't put it away at the second effort. If anyone had predicted that a few months later, a former Celtic hero, Morris Johnston, would be treating Ibrox's hallowed blue room as home, the suggestion would have been ridiculed. But the most controversial signing in the history of Scottish football saw Morris Johnson lined up against Celtic at Parkhead in August 1989. Again, one of the high ball. Here's McCoy. He says it's Johnston again. It's a great chance for Morris Johnston. When we played at Parkhead, um, I didn't feel any nerves, but normally I'd have stuck away a few of the chances that I had. Uh, and obviously I had a, a bad match, but I rectified when we played uh, Celtic here. Walters, with Johnston. Stevens. Johnston, and he scored! A typical Mark Johnston goal. Only two minutes remaining. The Rangers players have gone way off the pitch. And Johnson took this up so coolly. He laid it off. There was Gary Stevens. And it came to him. He picked it up there. And then, as he's done so often in his career, swept it away. Oh, it was very, very important for me because having missed the chances at Parkhead, People were trying to say, well, will he do it against um, his old club? And I just proved everybody wrong. Nigel, you've probably heard a lot about old firm matches from south of the border, but what was the experience of playing in your first? Great experience. Uh, it was nice to win the game, and uh, to score the goal was uh, very unexpected. Nothing else, Paul McStay hasn't got going. Here's Backman, that's a better ball. Johnston. Here's McCoy. Backman, he scored! That's a beautiful goal by Rangers. Spackman, Rangers' new signing in his debut in an old firm game. Scores the first goal of the match. A beautiful move here. A superb touch inside from Johnson to McCoy. And that emphatic finish there by Spackman. For me, as, as an Englishman coming up here, um, each game to me was only worth two points. Um, you know, as long as we got those two points, as long as we took another step towards the title or whatever, I wasn't too bothered. But having been up here, it means that much more. It means so much more to people that you feel that responsibility. You feel a lot of pressure in that game. Uh, I'm pleased when the games are over and, and uh, Rangers have won. 
Slipped in by Butcher. That's Richard Goff trying to meet it. Oh, it's a handball! Anton Rogan. A clear penalty. Yes, I don't think there can be any doubt about this. It's a super ball from Terry Butcher. Goff comes in. Oh, there's no doubt about that. You can't do things like that in your own penalty area and hope to get away with it. What was he thinking about? 28 minutes gone. And Pat Bonner faces a penalty to be taken by Mark Walters for Rangers. Of paramount importance for Rangers, this. And Bonner got to it but couldn't keep it out. Mark Walters, 1-0. 16 minutes before half-time. Yes, he's so close to making it three out of three here, Pat Bonner. Guesses the right way. Gets across magnificently. It's low down. Uh, oh. McCoy. And again. Ferguson going a hunting. And uh, Goff once more. Oh, and Johnston. Picked out by McCoy, 2-0, splendid goal. And Rangers on their way to wrapping it up in the first half. This is a tremendous finish. Alan McCoy's very aware, this is what striking partnerships are all about. Super run across from Matt Walters, clears the way. And that's a magnificent finish from Maurice Johnson. An international class finish. Actually, the, the move starts when Paul McStay is tackled tremendously by Ian Ferguson in midfield. That was a brilliant tackle that started it all. A great ball in, and that's a super finish in anyone's language. There are none better in that situation. Dobchik is hurt and was actually playing players onside. This is Walters. Johnston. Oh, and McCoy says he's given another penalty. I think he has. Penalty number two for Rangers. This is like Mark Walters did ever so well. Crosses this one into the box. Doesn't even look to beat the player for once. Thinks I'll get it in there. Comes across. Morris goes up. And Peter Grant, I think, the culprit there. It's it's one of these where, I, I mean, it's 6-1. I think if, if you're in a Celtic jersey, you're very, very annoyed that a penalty's been given. But if you're an attacker, you're always looking for that as a penalty. And Ali McCoy, given the chance to break the post-war record of league goals, jointly held at the moment with Derek Johnston, who's here at the ground today. Here goes McCoy. He's done it! 3-0, and he's had to wait a long time. There is the final whistle, and the Rangers are back on the right trail again. And to do that at the expense of Celtic is the extra thrill. And it's Sinder, Sinder. Nice ball out to McLean. There's the cross. Berlin. Smith going on the outside, but running into trouble. Comes it out in front. Cooper scores for Rangers. Six minutes of left. He made another second attempt. Possibly one of my greatest, if not my greatest moment at Rangers. And uh, to score a hat trick in any cup final, but especially against Celtic, was was a real, a real dream for me. I don't think any Rangers player can have a better feeling than scoring against Celtic at the Celtic end of New Year's New Year's Day. Particularly if you're a defender who doesn't score many goals, I don't think there can be a better feeling than that in the world. But I've got to say, I think it was something special being Celtic every time. It's a great game if you win it. It's a terrible game if you lose it. Um, they are great games to play. There's no other game like it as far as I can say. England Scotland games are. Um, different completely to this, isn't it? No, so that's an easy game compared to a Rangers Celtic game. It's great to win any old firm game, but to do it 
in a season when you're actually going to win the championship is that bit special. And um, as you said, we've enjoyed some really good results against them in the last few years. And um, that's all down to the players because they want it, they desire it. Um, they were the hungrier team on the days, and we've got to make sure it continues to Cooper. be the case. Here's Durant with a chance, and he's done it! A brilliant goal by Durant! Field by Stephen Desbutcher. Back with Wilkins! Absolutely magnificent from Ray Wilkins! There's Ferguson with a short ball, it's a brilliant one! And he's got in! It's a second for Rangers! Ferguson going a hunting. Goff once more. Oh, and Johnston picked out by McCoy. 2-0. Splendid goal.